this is your first time worshiping with us, we are glad that you are here. And we want you to know that God's love is here for you. I want to say thank you to all the volunteers and staff who helped with Charlie Held's funeral yesterday. You are a blessing to me. I also want to say thank you to all who helped with our community meal on Thursday. This is a great way to show God's love by meeting real needs in our community. It was an opportunity for Jim and I to meet more people in the neighborhood, too. Today, after the meal that follows worship, we will have our annual meeting of the congregation and corporation. Are there any other announcements? Let us worship the risen Lord. <laughs>
God is faithful and steadfast, eager to forgive our sin and welcome us home. Grateful for this promise of joy and of peace, let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Are you in preschool or 
at going to childcare during the day. Well, you want, you go to preschool, you go to the Montessori school, right? Yes. When I think about Piper and Eloise, Eloise, by the way, just celebrated her fifth birthday this week, and there's a teeny tiny handprint on here, so a long time ago. When I think of Piper and Eloise, Piper was really shy, and Eloise was really talkative and not shy at all. Raise your hand if you're a piper and you're really shy. I'm not going to raise my hand. That's not me. <laughs> piper? No pipers here? No one really shy? Okay, who is an Eloise? Who is talkative and, and, and not shy? And who is afraid to vote because you're so shy? Maybe there's a few. Maybe, maybe there's a few. You know, God made us this way. God gave us each a unique handprint and a unique personality. God has made you to be you and not, not someone else. Okay? Uh, we never have to worry about God forgetting who we are. I want you to look down at your hand for a minute and think about this. The prophet Isaiah in the Bible says we are inscribed or engraved in the palm of God's hand. Think about that. Think of a hand that would be so large that we could be inscribed, sometimes I say tattooed, onto his hand. If it's tattooed, it's not, it's not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere, right? He's always holding on to us. We can never fall out of God's hand. I want you to remember that if you ever feel lonely or scared to know that you are firmly engraved, tattooed in the palm of God's hand. Will you pray with me? And how we pray? Dear Lord, thank you for creating us all to have different handprints and personalities for Piper and Eloise, and for loving us and holding on to us in the palm of your hand for all of our lives. Keep us from being afraid. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. I'm so glad you came up. Would you, Riley, like to help pass out candy? Thank you so much. And the house filled with smoke. 
And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth and went with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Master, 
We have worked all night long and caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came, and they filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, <laughs> saying, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they brought their boats to shore, they left everything. And they followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Is it just me, or does Ohio weather seem unpredictable at this time of year? Is it me? Cold one day, really cold the next day, snow off and on for a week or more. You can go to school for a week. Is that how it's supposed to be here? <laughs> Days. And then there's warmth, enough that I could go for a really nice walk. Did you go for a walk Sunday or Monday? It was warm. 60 degrees and balmy, said by a person who moved from Florida. I'm doing well. 60 degrees and balmy, not freezing, as they say, when it gets to be 60 degrees. Then there's warmth and rain, and more rain and fog until we are longing to see the sun. Days go by, no sun. Before you know it, the cold is back again. So what is typical for this time of year? Is this it? <laughs> the PNC didn't tell me that. And he held her for a long time. He just held her. 
and she trembled in his arms. She was afraid of him. She was trembling. As we describe the behavior that's worrying us, he paused for a long time, the bed, and he looked at Jim, and he looked at me, and he looked at me, and this was his diagnosis. She seemed stressed. <laughs> Galilee, 
and the Sea of Tiberias. All three of them are the same body of water. The Sea of Galilee is a medium-sized freshwater lake about eight miles wide, 14 miles long. It's fed by underground springs, and its main source is the Jordan River. Connections. Though this is a call story for the disciples, it isn't the first time that Simon, Peter, and Jesus have met, not in the Gospel of Luke. Simon Peter has witnessed other miracles before the miraculous catch of chapter 5. He probably saw Jesus in the synagogue in Peter's hometown of Capernaum. This is on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee in chapter 4. There Jesus astounds everyone with his teaching because he has an authority, such authority, unlike the scribes. He casts demons out of a man with an unclean spirit in the synagogue, and the demons cry out, Let us alone! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus has already been to Simon Peter's house, before the fishing scene. In 438, he leaves the synagogue and immediately enters Simon's house. Did Simon invite him? We don't know. Did Simon know he was coming? We don't know. Jesus has a way of just showing up, uninvited, or inviting himself to people's houses for dinner. Remember Zacchaeus, the son? You come down, I'm going to your house today. That's Jesus. This could have been how he met Simon Peter, because this is the first time Peter is mentioned in Luke. Now Simon's mother-in-law, who lives with Peter, extended family, is suffering from a high fever. Jesus rebukes the fever, and it leaves her. She gets up and immediately starts serving them. As the sun goes down, Crowds of sick people come to Jesus at Peter's house. <coughs> Jesus lays hands on them. He cures them. He casts out demons. And they come out shouting, no question about his identity here, You are the Son of God! This is all in front of Peter. So Peter knows the true identity of Jesus and that he can do miracles of healing and teaching with authority unlike the scribes. They have a growing relationship, and Jesus has stayed in Peter's home. You get to know someone really well when you stay in their home, don't you? But still, Peter's pride moves him to answer the Lord's request to go out into the deep water to fish. Master, we worked all night and caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. If you say so. What do we usually mean when we say, if you say so? My husband's smiling because we had a conversation about that. He says that to me sometimes. <laughs> if you say so is a polite way of saying, I don't agree with you. <laughs> or you're wrong but I don't want to argue about it, right? Right? That's what if you say so means. This is my take on what Peter is really saying. Jesus, I'm going to do this because you're asking me, and I like and I respect you, and I'm grateful that you healed my mother-in-law and all. But it isn't going to work. It's a big waste of time. That's what he's saying with if you say so. The fishermen are ready to be done for the day. They work all night long. It's a physical job all night long. They're tired. They're discouraged. They have two crews to pay and no fish at all. How discouraging would that be? Now, someone who has no experience with commercial fishing or boating, for that matter, the son of a carpenter from Nazareth, Nazareth is perhaps 40 miles southwest of Capernaum, way out there. Now this guy from Nazareth is telling Peter how to do his job. How would you feel if you were Peter? <laughs> it was 
probably got off easy with if you say so. Um, but despite Peter's lack of faith and if you say so attitude, the Lord still blesses Peter for his obedience. He still did what Jesus said. Our attitude doesn't change God's plans for us. It just makes it harder for us to do God's will. Our attitude doesn't change God. Our attitudes don't cancel out God's grace that covers our sins. It's just another sin. And God's grace is big enough for that. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> God wants to bless us beyond our imagination. Not because we deserve it. Did Peter deserve two boats full of fish? If you say so. <laughs> he wants to bless us because he loves us. That's the end of the story. He loves us. And he has a plan for the salvation of the world that includes us. We're part of this plan. But we have to be obedient to the leading of the Spirit, or we're going to miss the blessing. We're going to miss the, the boats of fish in our lives. If we're not obedient, if we stop at the if you say so and don't do what God wants us to do, okay? If you say so, you're still talking to him. That's good. Okay. You're still recognizing he is the master of your life. Don't miss the blessing. That call is still valid for me and for you. There's a lot of work to do. Just look around our community. And many people don't trust churches anymore. They've had bad experiences, and I hear about them, and I feel really bad. And I think, well, maybe if I had that experience, I wouldn't trust churches either. They don't think the Bible is relevant. They don't read it. That's why they think it's not relevant. Or that God and God's people are concerned about their well-being. That, that, that community meal last Thursday shows we are concerned about our community's well-being. We are. But it's OK if we are struggling to work out what catching people means in our lives. Do you know what that means in your life, catching people? I'm not sure, especially for Presbyterians. <laughs> I, I don't know what that means. What should the church do to reach out to the community for Christ? That's the question. How could we make a difference? That's the question. We can be sure that it means cultivating loving relationships with people inside and outside the church. People outside our comfortable circle of friends. Because we get really comfortable with our friends. Our friends know everything about us and still love us. But there are other people outside of our circle of friends. Certainly it means reaching out to people who aren't being nurtured in the faith. And it's going to mean taking risks. Sometimes people won't like what you're saying. But it also means letting go of things that give a false sense of security. Peter knew who he was. He was a great fisherman. Not the greatest, though. It'll mean letting go of fear. Like Jesus said to Peter, do not be afraid. This is something beyond you. Let us hope in the one who wants to bless us with abundant and eternal life. Join with me in serving the one who suffered and died so that we could be made right with God and reconciled with each other. Let us help one another be obedient to the word and spirit that we might be tired or discouraged and tempted to say, if you say so, rather than, here am I, said me. Will you pray with me? Let us pray. Holy One, we are Peter falling down in front of your son. 
crying out how sinful and unworthy we are of your call to discipleship. Yet you pour out abundant blessings on us and embrace us with your love and grace. Teach us what we need to know and equip us to effectively minister to one another and to our community. Help us to be a light to all who walk in darkness, to those who have been hurt by church, disappointed by God's people, or simply feel they have been let down by the world. Open our eyes to the beauty of your present and coming kingdom all around us and the glory of the one who died to set us free from our sinful humanity. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us sing.
Well, even for those in the anniversary of the Apollo, did you say? Apollo 11. Apollo 11. And love for Valentine's Day. I hope no one ever feels left out. I always think about that. What about those who no one says Happy Valentine's Day to? Yes, no doubt. Ava, winter, winner. Prayers for her. Others, I know Jan. Continue prayers for Jan. She's still in the hospital. Yes, indeed. I'm sorry to hear that. Prayers for Jason, a, a, a man, a young man, who was in a car accident this morning. Thanks. Yes, in the back. Prayers for my husband. He's in the hospital. I'm sorry to hear that. What is his name from my, my Roger. Sister? Roger. Sorry to hear that. Is, is that Liz? Yes. Liz. <laughs> Who has cancer? Jody. Okay, we will be praying. For Jody? Jody. Okay, we will pray. Healing from cancer. Any others behind me? Any others? Oh, yes. Um, a friend of mine uh, very recently. Uh, I'm so sorry. A young person then, Brayden. He has a tumor in his brain. We will pray for his healing. Please keep us updated. Any others? Yes. The situation in Venezuela. Yes. It's close. Situation in Venezuela. Anything else? Okay, I invite you to join me then in a responsive prayer of the people. This is in your bulletin. O oh God Most High, you meet us where we live and invite us to be part of your purpose. All thanks and praise to you, for you hear our prayers for the church, the world, and all who live in it. On the day I called, you answered me. You increase my strength of soul. We pray for the church and for all who work to bring others a word of compassion. We pray for those suffering from war or calamities of nature. We pray for those who are oppressed and need courage to resist.
God of majesty and glory. Through Jesus Christ, you summon us into your compassion for all creation. Renew in us your call and release us from all fear that we may testify in words and deeds to your steadfast love for all. And we continue our prayer as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. We are invited to cast our nets into God's abundance and to share what we have received with others. As we give our tithes and offerings today, we put our trust in the one who has called us to follow him, Jesus Christ, the great fisher of people.
blessing. Don't be afraid to put out into deep water. We are not alone. We have partners in other boats beside us, and Christ has gone before us. Let down your nets expecting God's abundant provision. And may the Holy One fill you with awe. May Christ the Teacher amaze you with His grace. And may the Holy Spirit increase your strength of soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.